Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash beat and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Download the title free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash B-E-A-T. What is the damn deal? Look who's back. Man. <laughs> man, man, no man, rises man. from the ashes. Right when Connie is dropping Jesus is king. Tonight. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> Tonight. Back from the dead. Coming back at you. Three-point shot. Kobe. I didn't die, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm back at you, baby. Welcome back to Super Throwback to the Classics. This is Super Throwback September, the final one for uh, this month. Uh, Super Throwback to the Classics, the cinematic movie podcast that takes you back to the iconic films of 20 years ago and beyond right here on the Big Three, iHeartRadio, Apple Music, and Spotify. I'm your guy, Jan Lonzo. With me, of course, is... Danger Neff. David Danger Neff. How you doing, partner? What is going on? And of course... We got to bring in uh, 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 the, the the third member of the squad, <laughs> That's right. um, our guy Lund. What's up, brother? That's right, Leland Lund Hairston's back in back in the house. Absolutely. So let me let me go ahead and just get it out of the way right now because Lund has looked out for me while I was uh, down. Um, so I gotta say, uh, first and foremost, thank you very much for uh, uh, holding me down while I was gone. Uh, I, I heard both shows. I know you did three shows, right? Yeah, he did three shows yeah and i I gotta tell you the boy sounds good i had to explain to somebody the other day that at this point he's pretty much a third member which unfortunately i know this is going to be the last episode until basically the next one for you but we we gotta figure something out for you man yeah who knows man i'll just take a week hiatus (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just get sick again it's all good Don't worry about it. but uh but no but 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 definitely uh, uh you held it down for me while i was gone and i thoroughly appreciate it man uh you, you sound great on the mic by the way too yeah uh, you, you are very welcome and i got you fam <laughs> fam good looking fam for sure uh dave what's what's the, what's the what's the what's the week been like man it's week it's been two days since we last recorded or or three days since we last recorded if you're hearing the show <laughs> by the time you hear the show we recorded this the friday before this should actually drop and here's why so next week is supposed to be closed and we and we kind of start prepping for year end at, at the day job and uh it would make sense also because lund works at 5 a.m in the morning and because uh, Jay's schedule is a little bit kind of wonky as well. It makes it so much easier just to do this on a Friday when I know these two have the day off and who cares about me? Um, so we yeah, care so, about you. <laughs> yeah, we care. <laughs> so, but make so, it us, so that's the, uh, so, so that's the gist of why we're doing it this way. Yes. Uh, but, uh, it's, it's going to work out. It's been working out actually. So, so. How, how does it feel to rise from the ashes? It feels great. I, I can tell you this. Uh, for those of you, of you who don't know, and I'm going to be co- completely honest, uh, uh, there was a, a health scare. Um, I won't get too much details about it, but um, yeah, unfortunately, I was I had to uh, do some time in the hospital. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, but uh, hospital hospital is what we're going to call it. <laughs> um, but but above all else, though, um, I'm, I'm much better. I'm feeling a hell of a lot healthier. I'm I'm, uh, I'm feeling much more focused. I'm feeling more. Uh, I can't. You know, I, I've literally. You know, though Lund looked out for me, I was like, fuck, I want to be back on the show, man. I, I, miss, I, I miss my home. You He's know? sitting in my seat. He's sitting in my damn seat. But but uh, I took time off to get myself right. And and um, I got to tell you, I'm feeling better than I've ever felt before. So, That's good. Uh, That's good. No, it's good to have you back. Finally, you know, I was I was holding down the fort. It was uh, weird opening shows, but it started to get better after I, that. I heard. One. It, it, I felt like the first time you, you opened it, you were like, Hey y'all! This is back oh, to the class. I, I had no idea what to do. Do 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 I had no. I had no idea what to do. You sounded great. But, you, but, you sounded but, great. But after the third one, I was like, I was like, all right, I'm all in right. my flow now. This like this, like this is easy. Oh yeah, this is easy. J uh, ain't shit. Wait, no, that that that's not what I said. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, damn. Gotcha. Hot, hot ones challenge. Let's gotcha. Fight it out. Let's see ones. <laughs> yes, that that whatever happened to that hot ones challenge that was supposed to uh, go uh, down. Oh, what happened? Didn't we? Uh, hmm. Didn't you die? 
I, I, I did die twice. <laughs> I did die twice. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that this is not Lund's last time on the show. We got to have him back for some more stuff. Even with him either here or not, he, you got to come back for the show. I mean, you, you have a natural talent for this. And whenever, bro. Whenever. Again. All right. Figuring that out as we speak. <clears throat> It's it's just a it's a work in progress right now. Hey, like uh, Vigo the Carpathian said, I will be back. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just Ghostbusters to us? Ghostbusters, you, you, you. could have you could have terminated us. You know, you know by saying I'll be back, it, it, but you know, I funny. will be back. Vigo the Carpathian. Everybody who's listening right now, when he's dropped the name Vigo, they're looking like, huh. <laughs> <They're> oh, <like, laughs> got you. All right, what are no, those? When he said the Carpathian, they're like. Who the fuck is the Carpathian? Hey, man. Like, oh, oh <laughs> death is but a door. Right. The bad <laughs> Ghostbusters, right. It's but a window. So we're bringing back some news. We, we got some uh, news to talk about today. Uh, I, I've been, me and Dave talked on the phone, uh, what was that, couple, like two days ago? We, we've we been talking like every day. Every day. Lately. It, you're it's my guy. Re- it's been really nice. <laughs> it's, it's, it has I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It's been really nice. It's, it's kind of awkward. Just, just kind of <laughs> seeing, kind of seeing awkward. Uh, 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 So yeah, so uh, so so Dave calls me and he's just getting out of uh, seeing uh, Ad Astra, and uh, mm-hmm. I was just going above and beyond hard for this trailer that I saw for the new Adam Sandler flick directed by the Safdie brothers called Uncut Gems. Uh, it premiered at TIFF. And it's getting crazy reviews at Tiff from from Tiff, and then uh, furthermore, people are, are talking about Oscar buzz for Adam Sandler in the movie itself. So these two watched them, watched the trailer while we were prepping for the show. Lun, what did you think about the trailer? I, I'm excited, man. Like you know what? Like back in the day, SNL and his first stuff, I really loved his comedy. But like, I know he can act. He has some good chops when he wants to, you know, put mm-hmm. the work in. Mm-hmm. And it looks like this is going to be a really good story. It's going to be a really good role. I'm, I'm excited to see it. I, I I agree, dude. Um, unfortunately, well, no, I want to say unfortunately. I say fortunately now. My f- more desired Adam Sandler roles are the serious ones. Uh, comedy's no longer for me when it comes to Adam Sandler. But well, his best roles have always been has actually always been the serious ones. Yeah, and I say his best roles are also though they're the serious ones. The ones that aren't written for him. Or Betty, right. is, here we go. His best roles are not Happy Madison productions. <coughs> Let's put it that way. Right. Someone That's he cool. interprets someone else's work. A little exactly. Bit right. Yeah. Dave, what do you think about the uh, Uncut Gems trailer? It looks all right. Yeah, you know, I think I think there's potential. By also there were part there there were parts of it that I was just kind of annoyed with Sandler's performance with it more than more than anything. But we'll see. Yeah, uh, it, it really has a it, it has a Robert De Niro the fan feel. Which is I'm eyes. trying to really break that part down because he was like so because he was so like. Wanting to 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 make it work because you know Wesley Snipes, you know uh, I can't I can't think of his character's name. I've only uh, seen Bobby Raber. Okay, I've Thank seen you. the fan. All right, numerous times. <laughs> and and in that one, you know, he was just like he was like, oh, he's supposed to be the chosen one in this one. And then and but you could always tell he was always kind of a little shady, schemy, yeah, whatnot. Right. This one, it's it's you know he's kind of putting all his money on Kevin Garnett, right. who's now. You know Wesley Snipes apparently in this one. I the one thing about the the shooting of the trailer, the, the way the trailer is, is put together, I thought was was awesome. Um, it looks very dark, like seedy underbelly of New York, which is really like the Diamond District. But um, the one thing that sold me on it was that last line was "This is me. This is how I win." And it's a simple line, but the way he delivers it and the, how, how that whole shot is framed, it looks chilling as fuck. Right, and you never quite seen him be like that. You know, movies like Rain Over Me, um, um, oh, he had, he uh, had Spanglish. That, you know, he, he had that movie Sandy oh, was, Sandy Wexler. Yeah, it it had a very Sandy Wexler feel for me. Which as far that as the mo- voice, yeah, and kind of like the weaseliness of him. Mm-hmm. You know, which is fine. It's just, it, it's just, I'm not used to that from from Sandler. I'm think, not used to Sandler being I, the weasel. I think that's his third. You know, Pokemon Evolution. I think that's what we. What, I think that's weasel? what he is now. <laughs> right, right. He was kind of like the the goofball, like rage guy. Anger is the first evolution. Second one is what? He's the dad. Yeah. He's, he's dad definitely bod, the dad. And, uh, because, he's dad know, bod, we're, and now we're talking, and now yeah. he's a weasel. I'm just saying, like, even though he's playing that role, it looks like he's having fun with it. He's so. having a blast playing this role. So, you can tell. You know, hey, do it. There, there is one part in Sandy Wexler that actually cracks me the 
fuck up. It's like when he's when like the the woman's like trying to seduce him, and you know they like go to the bed. <laughs> they like go to the bed. And he's kind of like feeling it. And he looks over and her dying husband in the hospital chair is just staring at whoa. him. <laughs> and like this really, it's super awkward. He's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, he's doing. I got to see Sandy things. Wexler. Yeah. I, I literally watched it one time and never went back. Oh right, my God. No. Oh, but, no. that, but that scene, I couldn't stop laughing at it because of how, how ridiculous it looked. But, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> a recurring Adam Sandler trope. Like a hot chick hits on him, but it's like awkward. It's always awkward. Uh, yeah. Right? You know what I mean? yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Uncut Gems does drop in December, just right on time for Oscar season. Um, coming up, oh, moving forward from that, um, Spider Man is back in the fucking MCU. After me and Dave spent over an hour talking about this shit, we did, man, o- over an hour. Conspiracies. They they were gonna make that movie anyways. They just, we knew it. They, we already knew. Like it's not like six nine where like he's gonna go over and just snitch on everybody. But <laughs> but your honor, your, your honor. honor. Real quick, did you know Dora, that Kevin Feige is Dora, actually gonna produce a movie? Do you know Dora Dora the Explorer's green card expired three years ago, <laughs> and she owns boots illegally. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Do you know Twenty One Savage is from the UK? But you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> but uh, it, it, I think they made the announcement today, as, as a matter of fact, that uh, Kevin Feige and Marvel will, in fact, produce the third Spider-Man movie. Right. Uh, after a deal was reached, and uh, uh, they're not really specifying what the deal actually is. It's twenty five percent. Disney's gaining twenty five percent, and then uh, so he's going to rest. But right. aren't aren't uh, Disney supposed to put up production costs though? Yeah. They are. They're supposed to pr- produce production costs. They get twenty five percent of the take. I'm not sure if it's the first. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the first night like how it used to be, but it's overall it's better for both companies. But um, Disney's still getting my merchandise, though, correct? Yeah, that's not that's not changing, right? Um, you know, it'd be dope. Like when they put that movie out, right? And that's when they uh, but, that's but when they the, drop Blade. Exactly. So you got Marshawn Ali in a, but, a Spider Man movie. But the Matt idea, Myers. whoa! <laughs> but the idea of uh, it's it's pretty much all but confirmed that that Spider Man will be featured in Venom two, Tom Holland will be in Tom in, in Venom two, right? Which is a little interesting because now you're literally taking a, a MCU character out of the MCU mm-hmm. um, to be in a actual superhero movie. So I don't know how that's going to work. But we're assuming he won't be like a dominant presence though. He just he's he'll Spider Man will be there, but not to the point where it has a very maximum carnage kind of feel because we already know that carnage is going to be the bad guy. We right. already so know Venom versus gonna carnage. Be there. Maybe they'll just Spider-Man. team up. Yeah, but that's how it was in, va- in maximum carnage. The sure. two of, yeah. the two of them teamed up to face uh, to face off. That game was awesome, by the way. The game the game's awesome. Oh, the, man. the the cartoon is that even red, better, <laughs> dude. That red cartridge. That red cartridge. <laughs> it, 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 oh it's my more than God. just a red cart. Like the red cartridge, it was so cool. But like every character that was in there, they're like, "Here's Morbius," and I'm like, "See, he does exist. He does exist. <laughs> He's real." You got they're Morbius. Like Hobgoblin. You got Hobgoblin Mr. Fantastic yeah. with Fantastic, the with yep. a sonic they had gun. Double, they had you got double cloak ganger. and dagger. Yep. One of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you ever watch the Hulu show of that? Uh, the the one on like uh, Freeform. I watched like the. I thought I thought it's on Hulu. I think it's on Hulu now. I think they like absorbed it, but is it good? Uh, I like the like first four episodes. I mean, they kind of flip it a little bit. Oh, like the story because like well, I don't know if they've retconned it in the recent years. In the original stories it was kind of like Cloak, which is like this kid that's kind of on the streets. He was kind of like sort of homeless, whatever. And Dagger was like the one from like the good family. Sure, yeah. So they like they of like white kid has to help out the black kid, Wait. right? So in this they kind of flip it a little. Uh, <laughs> oh, came, so so, Jay, da- so, so, da- so so Dagger's the one that that's on yeah. The she kind of comes from like in that one, and it, it does follow the storyline because in the comic, eventually, like her like stepdad, because her mom like gets out of the picture, like she dies or leaves or whatever. Right, right? Yeah. So that's always what happens. In Super her like her stepdad like adopts her, and she comes as the actual dad. And in this, it's like the mom is just like a train wreck. She does drugs, so like. I could see they can set up where something like that's going to happen. Right. But um, the kid who plays Dagger or Cloak, I'm getting them all mixed up now. The kid who plays Cloak is definitely like from a good family. Oh, okay. I'm just mad because like, where's the Cloak? <laughs> oh, he doesn't have a Cloak. His name is Cloak, but no Cloak. Well, yeah, I, because that I, was like the whole point. Like, I think cloak later, Cloak, cloak. has like a, like a shadow ability. So, okay. Like so, get a little nerdy here real quick. Okay. Right. Here so, we go. Cloak. Okay. So, they both were kind of like 
mutants, right? Before they got mutant powers. Right. But then they got injected with this drug, because this is like the 70s, right? right. They get injected <laughs> with this experimental drug that, like, brings the powers out, right? So Dagger sure, yeah. has the power to make it's light. Very, it's a very Deadpool-ish. Deadpool, it, Deadpool first movie. Yes, it's yeah. very <laughs> similar to that. But this right. is, like, I think before Deadpool. Right, was yeah, completely because Deadpool on. was, like, a 90s character. Yeah. Right. Uh, so Dagger can throw these light daggers right. and essentially produce this special kind of light. Dagger, or, sorry, Cloak, his thing was that his body became, like, the shadow stuff. Right. And it was, like, a connection to the shadow dimension, right? Right. So the Cloak... Sort of fuses with his body, right? And he's able to tell, like, to teleport by bringing people into the cloak, right? Including himself, yeah. Because and then, that was a big thing in, uh, that was a big thing in Maximum Carnage, exactly. And he could uh, <laughs> pull people out. But the thing is, it he, was he could also grab you and put you in the dimension, or just wrap the cloak around you and like suck the life force out of your body. And that's why we're happy to announce a new nerd podcast starring <laughs> starring <laughs> one. <laughs> Hey man, it's was, called man. Nerdy and Sweaty. Well, that's, that's where I'm going. Hey man, Strange Tales. That was one of my favorites when I was a kid. Nerdy and dirty. Well, while we're on the uh, the superhero train uh, and, and on the MCU train, uh, Kevin Feige, uh, not a surprising uh, announcement, but damn, definitely on time. Uh, it's been announced that uh, Kevin Feige will be producing a new Star Wars movie for uh, Lucasfilm Disney. Um, I for one knew that this day would come because oh, sure. uh, you, you know kevin feige has done so much for the mcu oh as you, you know he's like the king midas man anything he touches a hundred percent you know we're talking 20 what three movies now yeah so yeah. and then like anything that was good that you liked about the x-men movies like essentially he like would influence he, like, him to do stuff it. right so no. i feel like it was no surprise to me that they were going to announce him now what I want to know is after this first movie that he does, and it's like ultimate, you know, ultra successful, which we know we know it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Does he take over Lucasfilm and leave Marvel behind? No, because uh, it, no, Marvel. he seems like a guy who likes spinning plates. I think he'll yeah. just. I think he's just going to kind of take it all, to be honest. Because uh, same thing, same thing with JJ. You know, JJ, right, right, right. JJ was supposed to, you know, lead that Star Trek, you know, revolution. It was like the first one was excellent. The second one was I. You know, mm-hmm. and the third one was incredibly forgettable. Yes, it was. Like, 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 even though you could say it was a good movie, there's some, there's, the, there's definitely some moments in that movie. Yeah, sure, it's good with a little G. You know, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, That's we, gonna be the should, thing we of the day. We should totally put that on a shirt, dude. <laughs> I'm little. telling you, it's I'm good with a little G. It's, <laughs> it's good with a little G. You know. There you go. You know that there's our there's our first T-shirt. Oh yeah, it's, it's funny because March baby. It's it, yeah, that's totally coming back. But it's funny because. Uh, I want I, for another thing for like merch. I want us to do. I want us to do. I, I want to do like like back to the classics, but I want it to be where we're we're showing like a poster or something. So like, there's a pretty famous T-shirt of Bodie from Point Break, where it's where it's his where it's his like most famous line. You know, it's not a it's not a tragedy if you die doing what you love. Yeah, but have it like that. But do but do that. But put your face as Bodie instead. You know, <laughs> I get to be Bodie. Yeah, Little G be Bodie. Sure. Fuck yeah, let's do it. As long as I can be Busey. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Busey in this movie, not let's say like Utah <laughs> two. That, no, I want Utah two. I want that as my shirt. <laughs> okay, so overall expectations about Kevin Feige producing Star Wars. What you got? I'm okay with it. Yeah, it's not that I'm not wholly interested in it. I actually think this. This latest trilogy is going to go down a lot better than people have like been. To be fair, it's been the wrong climate for for this trilogy, right? You know, like the first one was was good, if not kind of a rehash of New Hope. Retready, yeah, right. it was right, it was, right, it, was right. it was a, it was a bit retready. Mm-hmm. The second one I thought was excellent. I understand all the problems with it, but every Star Wars, Last has, Jedi, right? yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, every Star Wars has had a problem with it, and you can a- and you can ask uh, Lund how I felt about Rogue One. Like, like I loved a Rogue. I One. really enjoyed Rogue One. That third act, <clears throat> oof. like that, it, third, that third, third act was like, woo! Yeah. I'm stoked right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I th- and I actually think that this last one is going to be, and even Solo, like Solo, I actually really enjoyed also. Mm. I understand that you know this this last one's going to come up uh, that's coming up is going to be you know kind of the wrap up of everything, but 
I don't really think you need Kevin Feige to make a good Star Wars film. That being said, I'm not against it. I'm with it. I'm definitely with it. I definitely think, yeah, I think definitely going to be good. I think he's going to add some good stuff. Like, I feel like as much as he gets credit for just helming everything, I think he's just one of those guys where he kind of just puts some ideas in his fingers and it, and it just becomes kind of, just becomes better. Right. Like, back to the whole X-Men thing, right? Like, so Hugh Jackman, when he was Wolverine, he just looked like a, kind of like a normal guy. Mm-hmm. And then apparently, like, on the set, Ke- Kevin <coughs> Feige came up with, like a, like, a comb and a brush, and he started, like, brushing out the wings Nice. So like in, in he, the hair, so in the right. hair, That's so he fair. looked like he like looked, Wolverine. I like that. <laughs> like we have to make you look like Wolverine, right? not like to do with a nice comb over. You know? What I'm yeah. So <laughs> he was like, "Here, shave your beard like this. You're gonna comb your hair like that." And it's like, "Oh, Wolverine. oh damn, it's Wolverine." <laughs> uh, before we get into, um, uh, uh, and now a message from our sponsors. Today's there show. We go. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audio book with a 30 day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash beat and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audible.com slash B-E-A-T to get started. Why Audible? Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more from the leading audio publishers, broadcasters, and entertainers. I spoke last week of a uh, of an audiobook that I've been listening to. Uh, it's the history of espionage from the teaching company, mm-hmm. um, which is just absolutely excellent to kind of go through and just and just relearn basically all of history for something that that you know maybe didn't play such a major part in terms of in terms of like wars technology and whatnot but to kind of see how it's used even to this day even in today's political climate Mm -hmm. it's something that i just think is absolutely fantastic you reading anything Ooh, fascinating uh am i gonna lie uh i just got our trial (laughs) but i'm looking forward to reading a few things actually i do believe um charlemagne the god has both of his books now on audible now so i'm looking forward to uh, listening to those for sure there you go what you got, Len? Um, this was a little while ago, but uh, John or H. John Benjamin, mm-hmm. the guy that does the voice Archer, he dropped like a sort of auto or autobiography kind of like self help book called "Failure Is an Option." I really enjoyed that. Very cool. To download your free uh, your free audio book today, go to audibletrial.com dot com slash beat. Again, that's audibletrial.com dot com slash b e a t for your free audio book. Hey. Hey. All right, Dave. Ooh. All right, then now let's get into today's uh, movie. Uh, final uh, Super Throwback September. Um, why super. You, so why'd you choose this one? Well, long, long time ago when I was a little boy, um, okay. I watched a movie and I, and I I saw a, a young <coughs> post in living color fly girl named Jennifer Lopez. Oh my God! The okay. flyest, the flyest of the flyest girls, the flyest girl, but. More so, I was into Wesley. I think he was dope. And I liked the combo of both Wesley and Woody. Even as a youngster, I thought their their camaraderie and their chemistry was dope. So why why would you consider this like one of the 90th movies of all time? I consider this one of the 90th movies of all time because it's not just about this movie. It's about everything that they've done in the past and possibly the future. What I mean is, mm. we're talking white men can't jump. Oh, man. I, I call this movie White Man Can't Jump, holding a lethal weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Very, I like very it. Nice. White man can't jump, still <laughs> jumping. Um, and uh, and another movie called Wildcats. And they don't tell them what they're going to do in the future. If they do, well, you, Dave mentioned play it to the bone, but that was played himself. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, uh, but they were in it. But they're in it. But this movie, in, in all honesty, this movie gives me guilty movie pleasure vibes through and through. It's fucking retarded. Oh. Oh. Well, well I'm well, glad somebody said it. Hard R. Yeah. It, oh. yeah it, rah, retarded. That's, but, that's retarded with a big R. With a big R. <laughs> but it's fun. It's beyond fun. You know what I'm saying? So... With that being said, this is the movie we're doing today. We're talking about Money Train. Uh, original release date, November 22nd of 1995. Shares opening weekend with Casino, Nick of Time, the first Toy Story, and a movie called Two Bits. I have no, I cl- no idea what the fuck that is. <laughs> um, production budget, $68 million with a box office total of $77.2 million. Uh, currently sitting at a 22% on Rotten Tomatoes. Should I ask you, Dave? Is, is 22% fair? I think it's all right. I, I think 
I think the movie is slightly better than 22%. Maybe mm-hmm. a 30. Mm-hmm. Maybe a 30. Len, what you got? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, about that. I like, look, I really like the movie, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about this opening weekend, though. This opening weekend was insane. You're talking about Casino, which is arguably one of the best Marvel movies ever made. Yeah, I think we actually had it. So, a long time ago, Jay and I did our top five mob movies yes, of all time. Yes, Casino was definitely up there. I'm oh, yeah. pretty sure Casino was, was in that. Our top movie. two, for sure. Well, it was de- it's not my top two, but it was definitely up there because I know A Bronx Tale, because we talked about that movie later on. Right. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's one of those movies... <clears throat> Casino is one of those movies that the, the reason why I can't consider it like a 90s 90s movie mm-hmm. is because it's such a period piece like like I don't consider Goodfellas a 90s movie at all oh, because sure. I could watch that to this day same right. thing with Scarface mm-hmm. like like Scarface as old as it is it's still fantastic to watch agreed you know? yeah. um, and and of course uh, uh, Goodfellas uh, I think I'm pretty sure I mentioned, you know, Goodfellas, uh, Goodfellas is up there with me. But anyways, Casino is one of those movies that like that that kind of plays off the the idea of Goodfellas, which is Joe Pesci is an absolute monster. Absolutely. Um, And, and kind of turns it, it turns into that. But come on. Toy Story one. The first Toy Story. Toy That's Story, childhood in a bottle. Toy Story one didn't even make 90 minutes. And it's more memorable than most movies nowadays. Oh, definitely. Let's not forget the Johnny Depp classic, Nick of Time. Oh, yeah. It's such <laughs> a classic. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, Money Train. Uh, now, Lun, you said you saw the movie for the first time, right? That is true. Yes. <laughs> How did it make you feel watching uh, Money Train for the first time? I liked it. Like, Money Train, it's it's kind of interesting. It is very of the 90s, but it's what's kind of weird about it is, like, this is one of these movies that kind of goes all over the place. It has fun with it, but like as far as like an action movie that you'd see nowadays or even a like buddy cop movie that you would see in the past, like usually it like builds to a structure. It has the normal kind of like, you know, like you introduce the characters, you introduce the problem. There's some conflict in the resolution. Sure. Yeah. That, this movie doesn't really have that. It doesn't really stick to the formula. Here's why I think this one of the 90s movies of all time. Because of the ridiculous exposition. Like, 90s, I feel movies, that. 90s movies has this thing of, A, having memorable bad lines. Oh, now, yeah. I mean, there's some bad ones in this one. Ooh, agreed. Um, but, but just think of what the exposition, just real quick. This is, this is, this, I want you to imagine yourself real quick. For those who are listening, uh, in a boardroom. And you're coming up where you're like, you're like, shit. It's pitch time. <laughs> it's pitch time, guys. Like, like I need to figure out how to make this movie, uh, how to make this movie good. But I need to make it to where we can really have connection. How do we get a black guy in a room and a white guy in a room and make them work together to make to make a group? Not just any black and white guy. Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson. Oh, man. So here's the exposition. The basketball duo right John there. John and Charlie are partners, best friends, and... Foster Brothers. They're also transit cops that work undercover on the New York subway. Their sibling rivalry goes over the top as a result of their love for the same woman. Fellow transit cop Grace Santiago, played by Jennifer Lopez, and Charlie's plan to rob the money train, the heavily guarded revenue train that collects millions of dollars from New York City's subway boots. Now John must decide whether to stop it, whether to stop his brother. That's the exposition. That's really the movie. But <laughs> That's the whole movie, right? That's the there. movie, but now, now, so the money train is a very it w- used to be a very real thing. Mm-hmm. It used to be uh, the idea was exactly as it sounds. There used to be this train. It was heavily guarded. Um, it, le- it it literally was like kind of a no, like like no like no joke kind of train. Like like one of the earliest scenes that happens in this movie. I think there was an actual story based upon this. The money train was retired in 2006 mm-hmm. as people decided to use credit cards more uh, more often and whatnot. But no, there was totally a train that traveled under New York City, you know, collecting all this fucking Filled cash with money. that was that was minimum three four million a day. Like, so like, was like this through. the the transit city's 
like the sorry, like the subway system's money, like from collecting fares. Or? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, oh, wow. from, from collecting fares, collecting late fees, and something else. Well, you, you, I think you collecting know, a monthly as well. In in New York, the subway is probably one of the main ways that New York is getting around. So right. You can imagine how packed that they, you know when I went. That shit is packed. So it is. You imagine back in the day when everything you know to get around is all cash. It's all that, cash. That thing's carrying loads of money. No you know? Ubers. <laughs> no Ubers on a daily basis. You know, you have the subway and I think maybe I think you had the bus at the time and then cab. Subway, bus, and cab. So, yeah. yeah, right. So cab, bus, and then yeah, because Manhattan in itself is eleven or thirteen miles. I'm gonna get that wrong. Somebody's gonna correct me and be pissed. I don't know it. Um, but that's how you would get around, you know, everywhere. Yeah. The, or you could walk it, technically, because New York, ironically, as big, big as it is, and it does absolutely feel huge, you could technically walk a good chunk of it. Like, I walked from Central Park to the Statue of Liberty. Mm-hmm. It took a while, but, you know, <laughs> I got right. it, it took well, a while. But New t- York it, is a city as opposed to... Right, like I, L.A., which is just a hundred right. cities like, like that says it's one kind city. Of combined, a good a good example is like here in Vegas, like the strip in itself is is four miles, you right. know, up and down. Um, driving from one point to another, it's four miles flat. Um, but and you could walk the strip and walk the strip, no problem. But you don't feel like you could walk gr- from from the strip to Green Valley, or from the strip to say Nellis. No, no way. No. Of course not. A, you'd probably get killed. Or die of exhaustion. Or, or get killed and then die of yeah, exhaustion. The, the middle, which one came first? You might make it to the Silver Nugget. So, uh, <laughs> I'll say this about the uh, the opening of this movie. Uh, th- once again, it's cheesy. But the opening of this movie kicks off so, in my opinion, perfectly. Because, number one, Shaggy has the opening song uh, that's on the soundtrack. Right. Okay. So, once we get to uh, a drunk Woody, well, we believe the drunk Woody Harrelson... Uh, and then these two kids, these two uh, teenagers are trying to like pretty much rob him. Here's the first thing. We've all seen, you know, the, 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 the less fortunate people in the streets. Nobody fucking has a gold watch, a chain, rings on, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, d- this is right. This and is easy buddy. Let's do this. And well, passed well, out. Passed out. Well, hold on. Drunk hold on. as shit. Drunk. Yes. Drunk. I, yes. Absolutely. Like, cause I live in Vegas. So. Yeah, I've totally seen that that happen on the strip, no problem. Right. You know, and we all know what a trick roll is out here. Clear. So, so, but no, you're absolutely right. A homeless person having all this? No, he no. is pawning. He's at the closest pawn shop right now. <laughs> you know, he's, already, he's already left. Trust me, he's already left. He but sobered up. He got real quick. Bread. But, 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 uh, you know, they're, they're basically, they're, they're, they're falling for the bait. They're taking the shit. Da, da, da. Once they snatch that first chain, uh, the, the first piece of jewelry, it cuts to Wesley and he goes, all right, we, we got somebody. They're interested. All right, he's got a slice. Da, da, da. Once he pulls the, the, the badge. Yeah, the lapel. Which, which I thought lapel. was genius, actually. When they pull the badge and then, uh, the, the sign where he kind of like yanks his collar, to let them know, like, all right, Let's go. Then just this madness ensues. Like they're running through the train, uh, subway. It's people all over the fucking place. And you know, one guy didn't does get very far, but the other dude is like really giving them a run for their money. Yeah, you know. By the time um uh they get to the part, which is, it's like kind of low key hard to watch, but it's kind of cheesy. They get uh, the kid jumps onto the track. And then the train is coming. He gets back onto the uh, to the platform where the money train just happens to be, and and the money tra- and, and the guards in the money train see him running, thinking he's about to rob them, and they just light this kid up with yeah. bullets. Yeah, I mean it's not even close. I mean they light like, him up with bullets. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it is, it's gruesome. And it I guess I guess that's one of the things that 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 does make that scene incredibly hard to watch because yeah. you see cops right, and you know cops are supposed to use. S- substantial force i guess like reasonable force <laughs> like, like reasonable force and these guys like lit into him and with no regard to anybody else on the platform like it's right. other c- civilians there civilians right. there's a cop chasing yeah. there's a cop there's a it's a but foot not, chase going on right now but not only that but they're shooting so much that they're actually damaging some of the columns of of the subway platform and they almost hit uh, hit woody harrelson and wesley and, snipes, and yeah. wesley snipes. Yeah. oh you know, also john and charlie also, I think I, I might be okay. So we don't really officially get introduced to like, kind of like who the real bad guy in the movie is, but they're like, oh, there's an officer on pursuit inside the tunnel, and they're like, 
the guy, the chief. Yeah, he's just oh, like no. you know immediately. That's your that's your villain. Yeah, you already know that's the exact villain outside the train itself. Yeah, but when he goes, uh, 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 uh sir, we we got a no. He the, uh, Patterson finds out right. that they stopped the train because of the foot chase. Yeah. Right, and he goes, well, I heard you uh, you stopped the train. Why? We got a foot chase, you know, on the tracks. Fuck that. Send it so through. Send it through. Right. Yeah. Send goes, through. This, this cop's on the track. Send it through. Don't nothing stop the money train. Right. You know, immediately that's your bad guy. Right. You know so, what I'm saying? And that's transit captain Donald Patterson. Patterson. Who's played by probably one of the most disgusting human beings ever to exist. On the planet. Robert Blake. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Robert Blake's story, uh, years ago, probably in, in the early 2000s, and you, you know who he is? Uh, you ever watch Lost Highway with uh, awesome movie. Dave, oh. David Lynch? He's Mystery Man. Oh, okay. Awesome movie. So, Creepy as oh, shit. Oh, he's excellent as Mystery Man. That's actually his last role, and that was in 97. Before he caught the charge, right? Yeah. So he catches his charge for basically killing his wife, but he got acquitted in the actual trial. Mm-hmm. Um, because in the of, criminal trial. In right? the criminal trial. But then he gets sued in the civil trial, and he's found guilty and had to pay $30 million. Wound up being reduced to fifteen, but it's like think about that for the a way second. this dude acts in this movie. It's like, yeah, he's definitely killed somebody, right? So this movie is just uh, I, I, Patterson is such a fucking weasel in this movie mm-hmm. that I can't help but think, dude, if somebody shoots him right now, I don't care. I, also, like, a, a, a very nineties of nineties quote, real quick. There it is. You're not gonna hit him. Why not? Because I'm gonna hit him. Pop. <laughs> right. That's super 90s. Super 90s. Yeah. <laughs> that guy, he is classic 90. Like, cause he'll just come with these insults. They're just like somehow seems way too specific, but also way off the cuff. Hell yeah. So it's like you are straight up. That insult didn't even make sense. But, like, you, but it felt good to you. So go ahead and get it on up. Right. I, I, I do love, uh, I don't love it, but by the time we get the, uh, the, the, um, the introduction of Patterson with both John and Charlie. Uh, Patterson lets him know off top. He, he goes, uh, I, have, I have a question. Why would you send the train through when you were instructed we were in there? He said, your situation doesn't move me any kind of way. That's my train, my people, my money. Right. He said, yeah, what well, your boy shot the kid to Sheila. Yeah, that's what they did. And, and as far as I'm saying, he's a fucking hero. Yeah. Right. Let this be a lesson. Don't fuck with my train. Right. You've never heard such chilling words from <laughs> Nothing somebody. stops the money train. Nothing right. stops the money train. You stop the money train, I'll kill you. He so, straight up says that. <laughs> so, 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 so I give credit. I got to give credit to, to Blake on that because that line is a disgusting person playing a disgusting, disgusting person. Disgusting, right. man. And, and so it kind of fits the T a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. All, right, all right. So, um, Later on, they're, they're in, I guess, they're in the police station at this point. And Charlie actually asked John to borrow $300 uh, to buy him a Christmas present. Okay. Again, a little weird. You know, um, borrow money from me to buy me a Christmas present. Charlie okay. instead is using this money to pay off his gambling debts, which he basically owes to a club owner, Mr. Brown. Another weasel. Right. But... I can't blame him. He's more. He's, more, he's, he's a more. <laughs> he's an antagonist. Yeah. At the end of the day, like. But he's like, he's, he's not. He's, he's supposed to be like. He's supposed to be the bad guy of this movie. Like like. Uh, no, he, no, 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 no. Patterson is definitely okay, your bad guy okay, for he's sure. Su- he's supposed to. The idea is is, well, that, this, is is okay. You know what? The transit captain. He's a hard ass, and he had some really chilling words. But you know, maybe. Maybe if worse came to worse, you know, that would happen. Right. This well, Mr. Brown is there, really the bad guy. There's like tiers of villains in this movie. Because really, there really, is. really there, there's like three there is three villains actual in villains in this movie. <laughs> and like, like, okay, so uh, we're, we won't go into the, the cool, the actual cool villain. Right. Yet. The cool villain is a cool <laughs> villain. Like, but, but, so, but that guy, he's kind of like, if this was another movie, he'd have like, like a warehouse full of goons. Right, and they would have to like, Horse. like break into the warehouse somehow, and he'd send Ooh, he like a hundred. He dropped the G word, goons. Oh yeah, goons. <laughs> goons. But yeah, so Brown intends to have Charlie killed by throwing him off the building, and I got it. This is kind of a, a, of a hilarious scene to me because seeing this scene, the nineties of nineties, it, it is the nineties of nineties, but it's also really, really good shot because. The cameraman, and you could tell this, the cameraman is kind of shaking a little bit, mm. just a little bit, um, because that's a real shot. 
I'm pretty sure Woody Harrelson was literally off the, off, side, uh, off the side of that building by how the cameraman was holding the camera there. Because he's nervous. Yeah, they probably- yeah because he, ha- he probably has to stand on the ledge of this to kind of get this shot. And it's a good shot. Yeah. But it's like. I, I imagine they somehow hooked him. But I bet but, you he was but, just hanging. Nah, man. Nah, if I'm that cameraman, I'm going to be like, yo, I'm, I'm getting my, my, oh, no. I'm getting Woody. my 150 today. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting this shot. I was talking about Woody. I feel like he, they were hanging off the building. Like they probably had oh, yeah. some sort of harness, but he was hanging off the building. I know he was definitely <laughs> hanging off this building. So the, the 90s of 90s line comes in when, uh, he, he's dangling from the building. John shows up. Uh, wait, 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 like 500 bucks you showed up with? He's like, he, no, 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 no. He, he he gave him three hundred. He's short fifteen grand. Right, but John shows up with, with like three hundred bucks. Like three hundred bucks with, with right? three hundred bucks, and he goes, "Motherfucker owes Mister Brown fifteen thousand. He's like, "Throw him off the." You know what? Drop him. Drop him. Nineties <laughs> of nineties. Oh my god, hundred percent. So nineties. Um. So basically, uh, uh, John said, I, "I get you the money, right?" Uh, and you know, in return, let Charlie live. You know right. what I'm saying? Brown accepts. Let's Charlie live. Uh, in the middle of the night shift, they're introduced to Grace Santiago, who's played by Jennifer Lopez, oh. who's a decoy transit o- uh, officer newly assigned to their unit. Um, yeah, they they both thirst after very. Can you quickly. blame him? I mean, can you blame him? No, no, can because that him? because that was Lopez, like either right before or right after Selena. I think it's right before Selena. Selena yeah. came in ninety seven. It's ninety five. Be- because in Selena, she was. She was a goddess. Stunning. And let, let me tell you something. Just go off track for a little bit. J-Lo and Hustlers. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. she's still fine. But now. She is. Woo! But now it's just, it's very obvious. She's just too good for all of us. But right. I, I mean, you're just way too good for us. <laughs> you know like, what I'm saying? But this J, but this, this Jennifer like, Lopez. Can I, can I maybe. This? Maybe. Because she has that still like that sweetheart. Eh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it, this was like before. This was before like when she. I just want to be big, a toothbrush. Big. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, exactly. When, when it, she was still a little bit sweet. She's when, fine in this, but like maybe still gettable. Right. Right. Now I'm have a shot. Now, <laughs> now you're just like, can I sniff the seat that you just stopped seated? At in? least it may be a toothbrush. <laughs> at least you know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, fuck. Like, I mean, J Lo in this movie, and though her acting was not the strongest, no, but at the same time, she's all right. She's okay. No, yeah. I buy it. She 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 shines a lot more in Selena, but you know, I don't really think she's ever done a bad job acting. I just think she's been in bad movies, yeah, like good. like The Cell. Oh my god, I thought that movie was going to be amazing, and it's just artistic crap. That movie's kind of a guilty pleasure for me. It's nah, arti- it's, it's, but it's, it's still artsy, artistic crap. It's artsy bullshit for the most part. But <laughs> so so both brothers take a liking, mm-hmm. right? Uh, during their patrol, a serial killer, the cool serial killer, the best, the best bad guy in this movie, known as the Torch, robs a token booth and sets it on fire. Really? Now, here's a cool thing about mm-hmm. this: a, it's played by Chris Cooper. All right, Chris Cooper's always kind of had like something deranged about him. Yeah, has he, he ever his face. been a good guy in a movie? Yeah, no, he, no, no, yeah, no, no, yes, he, he never has. has. Yes, he has. <laughs> He's played fathers and all. He's done. Good but guy you Rose. know he whooped the shit out them kids. He killed them kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but 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 face wise, I would hate for be my fucking father. Like, oh my god, dad, but, dad I got an F. Oh, really? that's right. He's like, the he's the American like, Beauty dad. Dang oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh no. But to be to be Chris Cooper's son is like I'm gonna die today. <laughs> yep. Shit. So and Cooper Cooper plays this pretty straightforward. Like I'm gonna be a fucking creep because he goes and he asks for like the cash, right? And, and the girl gets the cash, right? he doesn't right? even want it. But he doesn't even want it. He's just like... I just want to burn some I shit. I just want to burn <laughs> Yeah. I just want to burn shit. Like, and he puts a hose with gasoline and it has to be gasoline. Uh, and, and then he lights it. And the whole fucking booth just goes on fire. What, what I thought was so crazy about that intro to that character, he goes... uh, uh, uh You know, he just sprays it with the gas and just lights the match and just stares at her. Right. That is a scary shot. Dude, because right. the next line is... Oh, give me the cast, bitch, or I'm going to light you up. Like, you better get, get, let's go. Look, <laughs> you know? Dude, dude, I, I need to know this guy's backstory, okay? Where and did this guy come that's from? That's the one thing about this movie that I really wish we had more of. Like, I would love for the Torch to be the main villain in this movie. You know what? I think, look. He's just so damn cool. I'm working on my, one of my classic Lund, uh, lukewarm takes. 
I'm saving it for the end of the once we go through it. <laughs> all right. But you know, I always have a theory. Lukewarm yeah. takes. I always have a theory about Lund's all lukewarm. movies that we go over. Right. I have a theory. It just forms. Lund's lukewarm takes. So uh, as uh, uh, now this is uh, John's time it's to be not the. Hot. It's, it's lukewarm. lukewarm. It's barely. Just, I'm kind of. I'm kind of. <laughs> I'm still stuck on this. So so it it's gotten out of the microwave. But it's cooled down significantly. You let it sit out for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> That's the take you're getting. I don't know if it's quite a hot take. Would you guys didn't tell me? It's, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, oh, this still probably has flavor. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 so, so John is playing the, uh, the homeless guy that they're looking to, uh, uh, use as the decoy. Um, uh, and, uh, as, uh, Charlie is shooting his best shot at uh, at at Grey Santiago. But not only that, but Charlie at this point, because he's at a, he's at this local bar, he reveals a plan to actually rob the money train. He talks about it. I don't think he actually plans to rob it just yet. No, but but he talks about it. You know, as if uh, as to he did it to te- to test the waters, right? Just to see like, what he, see, to like see what, to he see what everybody is like here. Okay, so here's what I find interesting, right? They're both, like, legit cops. Like, they're cop cops, right? Oh, but, but, Char- but Char- Charlie's already punched in. Like, like he, he, once he's off the clock, he's back to being, to Char- being a weasel. <laughs> I'm just saying, these are, like, the big, like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, Wesley they're, Snipes. They're, they're New York's they're, finest. Right. Yeah, Wesley Snipes, he's, he's pretty much a good guy, but he has that real sort of temper problem. So, he just he goes off the chain. But Woody Har- Harrelson in this movie is just kind of like a scumbag. So it's like, oh, he is, no so, doubt about it. So it's like, how did you two end up being cops? Like, the, it, it was, it was the summer of ninety one. Yeah, it's just you know, like, 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 it was a really bad summer as they were worried about the L A riots. Sure, at the time, and they said, you know what, we really need more cops. Like, I love that. And sort Sir, of, 90s they did pass a psyche valve. Movies let them through. Like, you could just be like a plain clothes cop or like a detective <laughs> now and be like an orphan or be like a survivor right. or like a killing but spree. Or I can believe everything about uh, I can believe everything about Woody Harrelson except for being a cop in this movie. Like, like ask me this. Uh, um, now this now the scene where he, he's talking about the uh, the the possibility of robbing the money train is that before or after you get this classic Woody Wesley banter? And the these stick up kids try to like rob them, right? And so they're got the guns on them. Right. Meanwhile, John and Charlie have the guns on each other. Right. <laughs> right. And they're going back and forth. And I, I love this because the, the kids look like the fuck is wrong with these These guys are so right. crazy for we yeah. out. Now, this part of the movie, I was actually like, you know what? This is quickly going to become my cut that out. Because it's fun, mm-hmm. does nothing. Like at all, it's not supposed to do like, anything. It's like, just supposed oh to give you that, that that classic banter between the two of them. Yeah, it gives you the the sells the relationship, I guess. Yeah. Sure, but everything is kind of building to the idea of what the relationship is. Like they're they're right. clearly brothers. They, they've they've done this more than once, right? You know. Um. And um. Uh, quick quick question: Do you know who one of the kids is uh, played by? I should know this because I think you told me. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> Flex Alexander from One Hundred and One. Oh, you didn't tell me that. No, and then the other kid, I think, is uh, I can't think of his name for another. I know he was on the wire at one point. Oh wow, yeah. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> Charlie uh discovers uh, they're they're back on on the on the train now, and uh, on the money train they're they're now assigned to patrol the money train, and uh, Charlie discovers a grate in the floor and uh, a ladder leading right to Central Park. Right, because. Because they're, uh, what happened is, as the money train is going along, as they're the ones that are patrolling it, um, they're like, there's people on the tracks. And they look over, and it's just like some construction workers, like, going up a ladder. And it's yeah. like, it's like, and, and hey, there's the big idea of the there's escape, right. escape route. Right, because they see it while they're going through the train, but then they see the top side part of it. Right. right. Now, this is when the shit gets kind of crazy, because as they're on the train, and they're kind of just looking out to see what's what to make sure everything is clear. This ass of a cop decides to put his barrel of his gun on John's shoulder. Yeah, like point it, like it's in, his, in my face. Yeah, you know like, what I'm saying? We already know it's loaded, bro. Because we know we, it's we're on the fucking money saw, train. Because we saw you guys lit up a kid earlier. Why would it just be loaded? Not to mention we're on the we're on the train that y'all are sworn your life to protect. There's, I know that damn gun is loaded. There's literally a joke in Archer about a gun having way too easy of a trigger, and it wound up killing. 
killing one of the main characters in the story and and it happened way too many times there were way too many shots that were fired i would would say every antagonist in this movie is like cartoonish levels 100 (laughs) percent. so a fight breaks out on the train uh of course j-lo gets in there she gets her little shots in and then they're now back now the three of them are now facing uh the evil dr patterson now yeah (laughs) (laughs) and this is where like i would would likely use as a cut that out because it, number one is racist as fuck, but two, it's almost like it wasn't needed. He goes, uh, "This your wife? No. This your girlfriend? No. Oh, perhaps a sister. Now that makes more sense. Uh, black brother, white brother, <laughs> and a Latino sister. That's like, such a nice son of a line. bitch. Are you serious? Like that's... I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's actually a good one. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Grace Santiago. Santiago. Um, but in the process. Patterson accuses them of, of $25,000 that had actually gone missing right. at that point. Yeah. And, and accuse them of being the ones that actually take it. Right. And says, if you're not the ones that take it, then you guys will stay up all night before it happened, before some other cop comes in and basically says that a clerk miscounted. First of all, how do you miscount 25000 <laughs> Well, you're kind well, of an you- expert in this. Can you miscount 25000 <laughs> it's there you have it, people. easily impossible. <laughs> easily impossible. Let me answer that again. No. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't miss 25,000 and then report it. You say, supervisor, can you come over here? I think I miscounted. Yeah, that's a pretty big wad. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even a stack. Like, like you got to, like, you know, you because you got to go through it. So You got to go through all of it. We're back at the bar. Charlie does tell John that the best time to rob the money train would be on New Year's Eve because of uh, looser subway security, uh, because the subway makes more money on, on, on that night, up to $4 million. Uh, and, of course, the plan is to go through that same grape they saw and then disappear into Central Park. Right. Like Not that. saying it wouldn't have worked, but it's fucking crazy. It is crazy. We, we You know, we have that set up the heist kind of moment, and I do, like... Uh, Wesley Snipes because he's like nah that's stupid we're not doing that shut it down <laughs> exactly and in the process of this John decides to give Charlie 15 grand the 15 grand he needs to pay back which is a little interesting that John is 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 able to just pull that Sitting out on of that nowhere, kind of cash yeah. right like you're just saying on that I mean good for you bud um, he was a cop and, in the and, 90s and, and that was his that monthly paycheck did, but Santiago and John begin a relationship Yes. Right. Uh, begin a relationship. It started off with a boxing match, which was, I don't know. Interesting. Okay. I, I like okay. that scene. I do okay. too, actually. I, I, I like the scene because he, because, uh, you know, she gets him a couple of times and you can tell. But then afterwards, I was like, I was like, he's going to lay her out once and this is going to be really ugly. It looked really bad. And what yep. happens? Oh, he lays yep. her. He out. drops her. Like, like, no problem. He's just like, I'm sorry. I'm She's sorry. a good sport about it, though. Uh, yeah, she's a good sport about it. People nowadays wouldn't be. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so, so that was a fair fight. She she totally no, she 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 got him like six or seven times. So that next scene, uh, John does give Charlie fifteen grand uh, to go pay go pay Mister Brown. You automatically know for a fact this is gonna go wrong. It's gonna go wrong quickly. I course. feel like we're coming up on my <laughs> cut that out. Scene uh, here. Uh, Charlie uh, goes onto the train and take it from here, Lund. That's this is your cut that out, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Okay, so. Charlie's on the train and he's happy because he's like, I have a solution. I'm gonna pay, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna pay my brother back, I'm gonna turn the other cheek, I'm gonna get this girl. Cause you know, they make this sort of agreement that like he'll get the chance to go after Grace, right? Right. He's like, everything's gonna be good, right? So this lady is hobbling up, <laughs> hobble, hobbles up <laughs> to him and like the train lurches for like a second, right? And she, this lady has a cane, she has this big ass coat on, she, her hair's like ring. She bumps into him. We all know what that means, right? Clearly. In New York, we know exactly what that means. We know what that means, right? She walks away. He sees another guy kind of do the same to someone else because he's like a transit cop. You know, like, uh, what they call him? Uh, not ambush, but the, uh, uh, the, the, the trap. I don't know. The trap cops. Anyway. Right. Yeah, he's a transit cop. He's <laughs> he, he, he kept some other guy doing it. So he, like, stops the guy. He cuffs him to, like, the, the stand. And he pulls out as well. It's like, here you go, sir. He's like, don't no, feel bad about it. It happens to everyone. Trust me, this is the best play. And he's, and he's touching his that chest. That is most blatantly obvious. <laughs> <laughs> he's touching his chest where the money's supposed to be. And it's gone. And it's like, 
dude, if someone gave me 15 grand, I would have put that under my shoe. <laughs> I would have crammed up my butt. You, I, I don't care. You, you, have a real, no, <laughs> you have a really good point on this because it's so unlike Charlie, if you think about it. If you're a weasel, like you've been showing all movie long, and you literally got your ticket to freedom, how are you not like, no, fuck you, you just got robbed? Like, you're like, on your own, buddy. Like, like, how called, are you not pulling out your gun be like, uh, no, give him back his fucking money? I mean, I guess I get that it's a train movie, but I would have called a cab. I would have been like, John, you tell... Thank you! I would have called a cab! <laughs> I would have fucking walked if I could! I would have called a cab! I would have called a cab. I would have been like, hey, John, you coming with me. I would have been like, I need a police escort to Can this you drop me off, place. please? <laughs> and uh, what's so frustrating about this, this is like, the rest of the movie pivots on this action. Right. And... <laughs> You're, like, uh, like it, you're so right. You're so right. <laughs> well, it, it, okay. So, so uh, Charlie looks outside. He sees the what we think right, of the old oh, lady. Old lady strutting right the fuck off. I with mean, money. I mean, God. She like right. Charlie Chaplin walks the fuck <laughs> out. Decides to go to this mob's place. Let me say this: If you know you lost it, why are you going there? Why? Why? Why yeah. are you going there? You I know you could get your ass win. kicked. I wouldn't win. My ass or killed. Gonna, my ass is going to Jersey. How do but, you know, how do you not know? How do you know that you're going to survive this ordeal? Like the last time this happened, when you didn't have the money, they had you over a fucking building. More than that. <laughs> I, the, okay, so so th- this this montage, which I find oh, interesting yeah. enough, we're gonna mix both Charlie going to see Mister Brown and getting his ass kicked. While John is making sweet, passionate love to Grace at the house. He's getting it in. <laughs> getting it in. Right? It is Even so, the song is like, a, this is a passionate a, song. It is a 90s music video at this the point. The song is so 90s. <laughs> do, do, do. Oh, yeah. Do. Like, I was like, is this but, in you? What's going on but how, but how are we mixing this love scene with Charlie getting his ass kicked? I, don't, I, I, don't, I never understood <laughs> that part. And then, but, but I, I kind of put, I, I, I put two and two together. After he gets his ass kicked, and then you get that last shot of Grace and John in bed, Charlie goes back to John's crib and happens to see, you know, Grace in bed with John. And don't forget, they both were going after her. And then John even get, yo, you go after, you like her, go after her. She, she doesn't like you. She likes me, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> so you kind of do see that downfall that Charlie like, fuck, I'm robbing money train at this point. I don't care anymore. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Which I, I think was well played, but a bit too cheesy for my liking, but. At the same time, you you know exactly once Charlie sees them in bed together and got his ass kicked and he lost the money. Yeah, it's it's downhill from here. There's you like another exactly scene that escalates it, but we already know we're there. <coughs> Clearly, yeah, yeah, right. This was this was a this was it. This was their big climax. So yeah. to nab torch, an ambush is arranged where Grace is now disguised as as the transit officer, right? Mm-hmm. Um. And it's a little weird because because uh, like Charlie Charlie goes to to John, right? And you gotta remember and John's kind of half pissed because Charlie admitted that he lost the money like before they well, right even before but, that because yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he smells the alcohol on Charlie, right? So he knows saying, Charlie's right. been out drinking on that. Yeah, yeah. So, but that morning he 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 knows. So right now, th- and and I, I gotta say like this is one of the reasons why I love Torch. Torch recognizes that there's undercovers like. Kind of looking for him, mm-hmm. and so he goes. He goes. You want to know now, why? Now, you want to know why? What's the, this dude's backstory, man? Listen, listen, listen. The black dude with the fucking Kango hat keeps looking at Torch every time. Right. When the when the camera pans, he, he's looking like, I see you, motherfucker. Like, right. I, I know. I know you don't know me. Right. <laughs> but here's what I love about this: a smart criminal would have walked away. Would have said. Would have said. Keep in mind, he's not in it for the money, though. Right. So he was a burn. smart criminal would have honestly just walked away. It would have said, you know what? I'll light someone asses up literally on fire another day. Or I'll go to a different station. I don't care. Right. right? Mm-hmm. No. He decides to go, sees sees a guy that's standing a little bit too close to the tracks, bumps him off, kills him when the train comes in. Mm-hmm. Everybody screams tragedy, right? Then goes to the booth. That's where, a criminal right there. Where, where Jennifer Lopez is, You're, and basically begins to try to set her on right. fire. Like, you said a smart criminal wouldn't do that, and you're right. But Torch, he is an intelligent, crazy motherfucker. Right, right. He is he, a smart, he's not a smart criminal. He's just 
an in- incredibly insane person in general. Mind like, you, his whole goal is to set that booth on fire. That That's all he wants to do. So I'm going to kill this dude, push him in front of a moving train to distract you. <laughs> And while you're doing that, I'm gonna set this fucking booth on fire. Right. Right. Watch it's, me work. <laughs> it's so chaotic. Yeah. That, Watch me. It's move. like the definition of chaotic evil. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a new definition in my eyes. What is this guy's backstory? Who is this? Guy? I wish we knew more about him. Like honestly, like why? Why do you like burning shit? You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I also love the fact that once he does, uh, he doesn't even say anything. He goes right to the booth and just sprays Jayla. And she turns around and goes, "What the fuck?" Is that that's so, like right. Or that's my scent. I know I remember you. That's my scent you're wearing. Even that is so oh, it's damn so scary. I'm like, I, bro, listen, I quit. Fuck that. Yeah. He's, he's stripping. He's bucking. I don't even need this job. Yeah, so, he's, he's good. So, of course, uh, Charlie, see, uh, Charlie sees that she uh, that she's in danger. Calls uh, calls John. All officers pursue. Uh, they take a couple shots at him, but doesn't it doesn't work. Charlie, I don't know what he was trying to do here. Like, I think he was trying to cause a panic, but it really, really, really backfired. Mm-hmm. He shoots his gun into the air, which startles a carriage carrying a horse, mm-hmm. which suddenly... Here's my problem with this scene. <laughs> <laughs> How are the kids not running away, like, somewhere else? They just heard gunfire. They know it's gunfire. It's broad fucking daylight, Right. No, they decide to go and la di da across the street. One of them like tumbles or falls or something where this carriage is coming through. Luckily, Charlie is smart enough to go and just basically book it and linebacker tackles them. Like, like I mean, just like gets them out of the, the way. way. Really, yeah, really like, yeah. crying and whatnot. I was like, I was like, man, you are lucky. Right. You are so fucking lucky right now. Meanwhile, you have no idea. Meanwhile, John uh, chases Torch to a whole another station. Um, and uh they have a they have a, they have a full blown fight. Right? right. And I wish this fight either either came later in the movie or at least went on a little longer. I don't know. Sure. I, I right, was because, so into it. Right, because we're halfway into this movie. And unfortunately in my eyes, this is actually where the climax of the movie begins. Yeah. Like because after this fight, and it's a good fight, you know, it winds up happening. The nineties of the nineties line. Say it. Oh I Okay, he goes. See what happens when you play with fire. Right. John looks down, sees there's gasoline on the tracks and the little metal pole in the sand. He goes, you get burned. <laughs> oh, like, what's so dope? Okay. <laughs> so they're fighting and like, okay, so Torch gets John's gun, mm-hmm. but also he, like, John gets him covered in like the gasoline or whatever. He's already covered again. He's wearing yeah. gasoline packs on him. Right, right, right. So when he lights it up like with that spark, because it's not like he drops a match or anything. No, he just sparks it up. He quick. sparks it up. Yeah. So there's enough gasoline to get to him. He's set on fire and he like immediately immolates. <laughs> you get burned. <laughs> and then he gets hit by a train. Right. And then he- <laughs> just to add this on the injury, he gets hit by a train too. Yeah. The train is the main theme here. Don't forget it. the that, train. That's now, some that's some real Rambo three death right there. I'm, yeah. Now, now Patterson fires Charlie for ruining the ambush. Uh, John tries to defend Charlie, uh, Charlie, but he's fired as well. Now, here's my question with that one. Why? How can Patterson fire anybody? He doesn't run the police department. He runs the train station. How are I you able to fire somebody? I don't understand. It's, his but, role is very, um, like, never really explained. You know, uh, yeah, you don't really know. Cause, uh, like, we understand Patterson to be the director of the subway station. Right. How are you able to fire two NYPD cops? I don't, like it's like implied that somehow he's also the chief of the transit cops. I don't even though he doesn't even though he doesn't like them, but he considers the g- other guys who run the trains his people. Like I, I don't even know, man. I I don't know either. He's just some weird cartoonish villain where he's just like, I can do whatever I want because I'm in charge. <laughs> so John heads to the strip club where the mobsters who kick who whoop the shit out of Charlie are threatening to, uh, were threatening him for failing to pay up the gambling debts. Uh, he storms inside and just whoops the shit out of him. He everybody. beats it. He goes full <laughs> Wesley. He, he goes, goes full Wesley. Wesley. He, goes full he starts Wesley. doing jumping spin kicks. I mean, I mean, he literally hit Brown with a 360 degree kick. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> Another 90s of the 90s line. Right. Oh, man. With, so, oh, mind I know you, this one. Mr. Brown does see Charlie earlier in the movie before this little ass kicking takes place. And then he goes, uh, he, he tells him the price or you're. And Bomb Brother is dead. 
Chan now gets to Mr. Brown and goes, oh, psh, I forgot. Oh, yeah. Who you calling nigga? Who you calling nigga? Boom. Love it. Roundhouse kick. Round 360 <laughs> roundhouse. Patterson, the- Patterson also had one of those one of those lines also. And it's a bad line. Like, I'm like, I'm like, he's like, he's like, I'm going to fuck you till you're dead. And I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> that sounds like, like, horrible. That, that, like that sounds like a promise, buddy. That sounds horrible. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, he's that guy where he's just like, take a bite out of me. Uh, you'll have to lick your asshole for a month to get the taste out of your mouth. <laughs> it's like, what like, the? Who says that? What the fuck <laughs> does that mean? Patterson and Mike Tyson says that type of weird shit. <laughs> Don't no, forget, no, no. Tyson says, I'm eat your baby. Uh, uh, Tyson said, I'll fuck you till you, you love, love me, me yo. Yeah. Like, whoa! Oh. <laughs> Dude. Dude, relax. Super rate. I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> like, like, yeah, it's so bad. So yeah. Charlie decides to actually so go through with, with, with his plan and, and rob the money train. Uh, John is basically reluctant to do anything about it, but uh, at this point now, Grace is like, oh, no, th- uh, uh, they go to the Christmas party. Right. And Charlie drops off this present for John. And it's, I, I, I like the fact that nothing was said. Just when he opens up the present, it's just a fucking train. Right. So you know exactly what, John, yeah, what Charlie's right. ready to do. It's the train Clever. that he stole off of uh, Patterson's, Patterson's desk, desk yeah, earlier. Right. Yeah. So I, I love that. Like, no, you know exactly what, what, you, know, you know what this present means. You yeah. know exactly where I'm at. You know exactly what I'm doing. Right. Uh, and so when, when uh, John goes, Charlie's going to do it. He's going to do what? He's going to rob the money train. Grace says, either, either you go get him or Patterson's going to fucking kill him. Like, you tonight. know he will. You know he's going to kill him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Charlie enters the train from beneath and drives it to the maintenance ladder. And I got to kind of give Charlie a little bit credit here because he kind of gets away with his plan. Yeah, he like, steals right there. the money train. Like, like, he gets the money and he climbs up this, this ladder, but he can't escape because there's, there's fucking cops on horses over there. Yeah, right. cops. Here's my issue with that. Why didn't you just wait? <laughs> I was just waiting. <laughs> right. Fuck. Like, 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 why not? You already got the money. You and, got, you and got the what assumption you would be that he took the, he took the train while it was on schedule to get to this next destination. Right. So you have time to wait. Yeah. Right. I would have just waited. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Why not see what happens in the next five, 10 minutes? Yeah. I would have just waited, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's a movie. Um, so they don't wait. So. John reaches his train and proceeds, Charlie. First of all, John reaches his train on a motorcycle. <laughs> oh, yeah, going through the subway system. <laughs> now, that's a 90s moment for uh, me. Let's I'm cause like, a commotion like, and drive a I'm fucking like, motorcycle through the subway. Yeah, right. do that. Persuades Charlie to drive further to prevent their arrest, basically. Like, keep going. You, you'll you prevent it. Knowing that Patterson's going to direct his team to basically trip the brakes, the duo decides to bleed the, bra- uh, to bleed the brakes. So now they don't have brakes. Right. With this train. This is when the movie goes ape shit nuts. Yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, ape shit crazy. Filling. It's my medium take here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Patterson orders a steel barricade. And I'm like, that's not going to do anything. I'm not going to do shit. Like, like, the minute I saw him do the steel barricade, I was like, I was like, all they got to do is take cover. They're, that They'll train right. is moving Well, they speed it. Fast. They're like, let's speed it up. I'm like, I'm like, this train is not going to slow down for this Patterson. I'm like, what are you doing? Right, right. Um, they drive through it, no problem. Um, and then, so they increase, and and this train is is hauling ass at this point. Like, like it's going way too fast for 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 my liking. Yeah. Um. So Patterson decides to to do something insane. His mo. Every time you see this dude, <laughs> like it's absolutely insane. They start clearing the tracks. But he decides. But Patterson decides to divert the money train onto a different track that's occupied with a passenger train. Well, but before we get to that, um, there is a moment between John and Charlie um, when Charlie's like, "I'm still taking this fucking money," and John's like, "Really, get off this train, and we're, we're we're not taking no money." So he, now we have this brother on brother fist fight that lasts all of I don't know, a couple I, seconds. I had a problem with John at that point. Because I'm like, I'm like, dude, you realize you don't have a job. Like, you don't like, have a You're paycheck. just as broke as I am. You, know, right? <laughs> you, yeah. lost, you hey, gave hey, me 15 hey, grand. Hey, <laughs> you lost 15 well, grand out of this also. Charlie has, like, Charlie has a good point at this point. Like, because he's gotten away with it so far. Right. So either they're going to get away with it, whether they take the money or not. Exactly. So, right. If John never shows up and Charlie waits 10 minutes, Charlie probably walks away with four mil. Yeah. Easily. 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 <laughs> uh, so they have this little fight, and uh, uh, during the fight, Charlie hits uh, John with a, uh, a really bag of money. Yeah. Which makes him fall, and literally, in classic 90s cliche, his foot 
catches the uh the little pole that leads you outside the fucking train. Now he's dangling he's, out the train. Yeah. Out the speeding there, there's train. There's no problem with that. How good is Wesley Snipes abs? Because oh. he's dangling and at the speed that you're going, your body's going to touch the ground. And the minute it touches the ground once, his foot's gone, he's gone, he's dead. Your head is off. You're gonna you- your head's <laughs> off. Everything right. is done for him at that point. But uh, n- n- now going back to uh, Patterson. Patterson does uh, have the train go onto another track where there's a passenger train ahead of them. Um, uh, wow, okay. this is so bad. Like this it, is, so it bad. is because like like he directs his. Who's that actor who plays the the other trains? Kowalski. Uh, uh, skip. Oh, shit. The dude's been in a couple of things. I've been a few sure. things. I want to say skip something. You mean so, the actual conductor guy? Yeah. 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 Wasn't he in? Man, I see that guy. A lot. I see him in a lot of things. I felt like I saw him in The Rock. You I felt like did. I felt was like he? I felt like he was he was one of the he was one of the people that was locked up on the that dude. That dude's in a lot of like movies. Anyway, so here's where I find this a little insane. This train actually, the money train actually rams the passenger train, right? But somehow it doesn't derail immediately. Like no, that doesn't, it, it kind of it, it kind of just keeps ramming it. I know it, that doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, I'm like, it's going at such a high speed. Something has to derail at that point. Well, um, Patterson's plan, so to speak, where they'll see the train ahead of them and they'll just immediately stop. stop. But right. if you have no fucking brakes, I can't stop. Yeah, like, like the okay. train has to keep going. Think about it, right? it has to keep going. Here, here's what's so weird. Here's why he, he lives. Okay, so he lived in this New York where this crazy dudes <coughs> riding motherfuckers on fire, right? Mm-hmm. But he thinks that oh, this person who's stealing the money train, which is impossible to do, it's gonna see another train in front of him. Like, yeah, they'll stop. That's what a normal. That's what a reasonable person would do, knowing full well that, that he wouldn't do that shit. Not only that, <laughs> my other issue with it is is uh. <laughs> Is if you're a transit cap uh, captain for a train, that means you have to know how trains work, right? Yeah. Like you have to know that a train has to ride on the rail and probably have to understand a safety course. You know when something rams something at, at another point. We always t- we always hear about derailments. At, well, not all the time, obviously. It don't happen too often, luckily. But we always hear, you know, when a train derails because they hit one little thing. One little thing, it fucking derails. Yeah. How does it hit another train and just says, oh, no, I'm just going to bounce it off real quick. I mean, so, the logic only works if you realize that the, the guy look, I've played, is just insane. <laughs> I've played Final Fantasy VIII. And at one point in Final Fantasy VIII, you have to reconnect two trains that are riding separately with each other. Right. It makes no sense. <laughs> so since the money train now has no braking power and the throttle lever is jammed at full power... Uh, they decide to throw it in reverse by um putting the uh, it's like an iron bar. Yeah, there's, there's like this bar yeah. that they're going to use, and basically the the power of the ramming is going to pretty much throw the the uh, train back in reverse. Yeah, full reverse. Yeah. And so you know you run the risk of either a trying to basically jump to the next train before that happens, or you pretty much die on the train. Right. Um. And so I, they they decide to basically <laughs> jump to the next train. Uh. And in, in classic, you know, '90s movie style, it works. Yeah, they they were able to jump over. They were able to jump to the next yeah. train, and then pretty easily too. Rather, yeah, rather which easy. Is, which is again a little frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, that's no, okay. it's alright, right. whatever. It's alright. You were you were complete, we're at the end. You, you were complete. <laughs> you were completely stopped when you jumped. There was no running jump. This was like a little normal hop for you. And now, you don't fall off the top. Now, this is what I do love. Because um, both trains are obviously going at a similar speed at this point. Yeah, because uh, the other train has to speed up. Because the other train, because the money train is flying behind them. Right. So you got to speed up at this point. Um, now, once the, uh, they actually throw the money train in reverse, and I love this shot, too, because by the time Patterson gets down there, which he's expecting to either see two dead bodies or his train in one piece. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, or both. Regardless, right? And so uh, when he gets down there, and I love the shot because once he actually once they get onto the passenger train, and the passenger train is able to kind of you know go off ahead, and then the money train is going to reverse and, do, and and flip it does what it does. The horror on Patterson's face watching that money train just—it's like get, shredded. It's like destroyed. Like, right. Oh yeah, it's oh, rent. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, you live for that particular scene, and. 
what makes it good is that John and Charlie are still pretty much getting away with it. Cause like, you don't know that it's them. They're not even right. injured. They're not even injured, <laughs> which no, is they're, surprisingly. They're they're fine. They're they're fine. <laughs> they're fine. <laughs> and they're injured because of the beat they gave each other. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But <laughs> but so, so let's recap real quick. None of these guys are injured at all, except for when they actually fight each other. Mm-hmm. Right. Wesley Snipes can whoop the shit out of everybody, apparently. Everybody. Which makes sense. That's and, and Charlie can just tank punches. No problem. Very well. Obviously, it's Woody Harrelson. <laughs> <laughs> so, they try to escape. They're spotted by Patterson, right? And they pretend to have come to help him, right? right. Even though they got fired. Patterson decides to insult them. Of course, because he's an idiot. Which I find weird. Like, you know, you just watched your precious train get destroyed. Right. Obviously, that you and you just confirm that the people that took the train are no longer on the train. Right. right. So I would think fucking with them is like the least of your worries right, right now. You right. must want to figure out what the hell happened to my train. Like because of their plan, they're able to disperse the suspicion on them. Right. So at that point, you just be like, "Fuck these two guys. I yeah, got shit to do with." I'm done like, with get them. Get the fuck out of my yeah. way. I need to find out who actually stole. The- but, Anyways, but he's cartoon crazy. Right. Yeah. He's cartoon crazy. Decides to insult them. And they both punch him directly in the Wait a minute. No, no, the no, 90s of the 90s. Fine. I'm going to hit him. I'm going to hit You're him. You're not going to hit him. No, because I'm going to hit him. No. No, I'm nope. going to hit him. We we'll both, both hit, hit him. him. Boom. And they hit him so Cheesy hard. Cheesy as shit, but effective. <laughs> they, they hit him so hard, he flies back 15 feet. He like yes. flies back 15 <laughs> and does like a full like flip. <laughs> and gets Mike right back up, essentially. Too. Right. So Patterson can tank punches, too. Well, well, quite well. <laughs> power of craziness. So... He yells out, uh, At- arrested for assault. Grace comes in, luckily, to save the day. Rushes in, arrests him for endangering the lives of the people on the train. Uh, and the two brothers basically exit the square. It's counting down. So cheesy. Counting down. Right on time. Times, <laughs> right on time, of course. At Times Square, as the countdown begins and New York, uh, and New Year's be- uh, begins. And at this time, Charlie decides to pull out that, of course... He stole five hundred thousand dollars. Uh, well, well, he didn't, he didn't just pull it out. They embraced. They go, "Oh, we made it! It's New Year. We made it!" Blah, blah. And as they're hugging, John notices, like, "What's what's this extra gut you got going on down there?" Right. And he goes, uh, "Oh, you, you know, I've, I've been eating more. Like, oh, you, are you, put on some weight. Oh, you're pretty. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know who the father is. You know." <laughs> and as soon as he un- unzips the jacket, you clearly see a price tag is five hundred thousand dollars. Like, <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> but. They argue walking away into in classic the, the Wesley night. Woody banter. Right. Like, was he gonna share it with John? Of course he is. <laughs> you know what I'm no, saying? I mean, if he did, <laughs> <laughs> or was he gonna you know, do? you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna give John back his fifteen thousand and the three hundred, and the like, rest there you is go. mine. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And sure, good night. for getting fired. So that's money train. <laughs> uh, before we get into takeaways, uh, now that we've broken it down and you've seen the movie now, Lund. Um, what is your look warm take? What yeah, what is that 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 take? Oh, okay, okay. Here's my look warm take. All right, guys. It might be hotter than I think. Here's my theory. I think this movie takes place in the same universe, same same world is New Jack City and a vampire in Brooklyn. Explain. Okay. <laughs> Notice that the weird side is like hmm. so, so they, there's, a, there's a lot to unpack with what you just said. So okay. So they obviously live in this cartoon version of New York. New York City, right? right. Of course. Now maybe this is just because of the way people act in the nineties and the way they gesticulate or whatever. I was like, this movie's giving me a really weird vibe, right? Like something's very similar. And I remember like a couple of weeks ago, I was watching the movie about in Brooklyn, right? Which was a movie I saw as a kid that I really enjoy, right? Slept on, for sure. Yeah. So, what's interesting in that movie, so as Angela Bassett, who plays like a detective, a hot lady detective. This movie has a hot lady detective, right? But also, her partner, Justice, is a... Uh, oh, man. I just, I just had this looked up. But is Nino's brother, G-Money, from New Jack City, mm-hmm. right? Obviously, Nino is... Wesley Snipes, they both live in a New York where there's cartoonish villains. Things are constantly exploding. P- you know, like, people can get in fist fight with supernatural elements. I think it's all the same New York. So, let me ask you this. Are, are we suggesting that in the world where there's a John the Cop, there's also a Nino Brown the drug dealer? Yeah. <laughs> Played by the same person. 
I mean, they're doppelgangers. Ah, okay. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So then explain the vampire part. Then. So are we saying that there's also, while wow, there's also Nina Brown, the drug dealer, John the cop, there's also Max Main, the vampire, the black vampire walking around Brooklyn. Well, I mean, I don't think he's in Brooklyn yet. But but he's on his way, though. I mean, he's somewhere in the world. Okay. There's, there's black vampires in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> allow me to allow me to process that for a little bit. Yeah, uh, think about it. Like, look, just watch that. Watch those movies and kind of see it, if you can feel the vibe. It's been a long time since I watched a vampire in Brooklyn, so I, I think I need. To watch I'm not it saying there's it. hard evidence. I feel like it's just vibe stuff. Like it feels very okay. It's like they, they came out the same year. That that I'll give you that. Yeah. Like okay, it's like it's like when you watch Point Break. Right? I'm gonna bring it back to my last appearance. They're obviously in '90s. L.A. Right, right. In this movie, they're obviously in '90s New York, New York, mm-hmm. right. So it's like it feels like the same New York, right. You know what I mean? It's kind of like when you watch Ducktales and then uh, you watch Tailspin, and it's like, all right, the characters don't cross over, but okay, okay. For that, I will give you that for sure. Del- I've always thought Ducktales and Tailspin was the same fucking show. It is, the- but it's the same. It is the same world, right? Okay, yeah, just in different places. I mean, this is obviously literally taking place. In New York, but let's get into some takeaways. takeaways yeah, uh, <laughs> Lund, uh, who's getting your that guy award, man? You know what? Uh, I think I'm gonna like. There's an obvious one here, but I think I'm gonna go the other way with it. I'm gonna take Charlie. Okay, because right, he's he's consistently a scumbag. He is a rogue with a heart of gold. <laughs> like, even though he always does the wrong thing, he kind of tries to do the right thing. He tries. Yeah. Yeah. All right, who uh, that chick award? <laughs> Dave's just giving me the death stare over here. I'm not getting a death stare at all. <laughs> All right, so that chicken world. Well, there's essentially one, one chick, chick in the movie, but I'm going to do another surprise here. I'm going to give it to Ada Totora, who tries to pick up on John Wayne's pretending to be drunk oh, with another woman. Oh, God. How do we skip that scene? <laughs> I forgot about that damn scene. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, let me break that down for you really quick. That looks so gross, but now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah, so the second time they're trying to trap cop somebody. I really should look up what what they call their unit, but the second time the track trap cops somebody instead of it being Charlie, it's John. The decoys. The decoys, yeah, decoy, decoy, uh, stings. Oh so, so he's wearing you know like a big old coat and like he has a top hat and a cane and he has all the jewelry on and stuff, right? So Ada Tatura, who you know is like you know, uh, in the Sopranos, the sister, right? Yeah. Um, her and another woman walk past John and they're like. You think they're gonna like rob him? And they're like, "Ooh, look at him! It's Wesley Snipes. Like they're, it's Sean, but they're trying to have some sex." Yeah, you know, they're like, "Ooh, look at him! Should we do it? Yeah, we should do it. Let's do it, right?" And they think they're gonna steal from him. And they're like, "No." He's like, "Hey, Daddy, come on, let's go, let's go. We can give you some good looking." So they're just picking him up. This this apparently knocked out drunk guy. They're just picking him up by the arms, like we're gonna take him back to our apartment, do whatever we do to him. Me too movement. Me too movement. <laughs> Where was Wesley Snipes' Me Too movement, guys? Yep. Yep. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't plan on robbing him. They wanted some loving. Yeah. I it's mean, horrible. it's a horrible. Like in real world, it's horrible. In cartoon world, it's fine. Where, it's fine. It's, it's, it's okay. They never got him, so it's fine. Uh, uh, that fool of work. Oh man, you got to give it to Patterson, dude. Like oh, he's just. He's just like back flipping Yosemite Sam crazy. Like <laughs> I think in that last scene, it! he like shows up in like a tuxedo with a bow tie and this like weird like 1920s bowler hat. Like you can tell he's going to some sort of weird champagne mayor party. But as soon as the train is <laughs> oh, like no. fucked up, up. That, that's an underground sex party costume. Yeah, I agree. In New York, as, I agree. As, as like look uh, as penny bags from Monopoly. Yeah, he's either <laughs> going to go to some sort of weird eyes wide shut like orgy, or he's going to some sort of like human dinner club where they eat literally eat babies. One or the other. Either way, I don't. I don't want to be a part of it. I don't no, know. it's not a good scene. He's a bad dude. Uh, cut that out. Cut that out. Uh, I said it earlier. It's the fake lady on the train. Mm-hmm. She shows up for that one scene. She never shows up again. And she's fifteen thousand dollars richer. She's fifteen thousand dollars richer. Skipping away. Charlie should have held that money better. Like I would have duct taped it to my body, <laughs> to my balls. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> iconic scene. Iconic scene. Oh my. Okay, give me one second because I had something for this. Um. Oh yeah. No, it's the the uh, John Wesley Snipes beat down. Who you call a nigga moment? <laughs> Danger, David Neff. Who's giving you that guy work? It's going to go to. The Torch. 
actually. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. P- picked a bad guy. I did. I'll tell you why. Because he's so good at doing it. Like, like. All we've talked about on this po- uh, on this particular episode is how much we actually want to know more about the torch more than anything else, right? And that we wish that he was the main antagonist outside of the the uh, fact that his name is simply villain. the torch, right? Yes, I, I feel like he is I mean, some sort of like Joker esque paramilitary. It, 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 it was gone it, crazy. It was pretty good overall. Definitely ex military. Something like <laughs> something that. like that. Uh, he he, uh, at le- he at least knew what he was doing. And he was absolutely consistent in continuing to do the same plan, which is to torch this one particular ticket booth, regardless of whoever is in it, and regardless of how <laughs> he has to get to it. To that go. booth has got to go. That I fool will light is it not up. in it. He is not in it for the money. That fool has tactics. Like he's like, you're keeping me from my booth. I'm right, right. I'm going to push this guy off a train <laughs> that is to my distract you, cops. So, I, so then I can torch my booth. <laughs> All right, uh, that chick will work. Uh, it'll go, J Lo. Okay. Um, she's easy on the eyes. Um, she she's attractive. She's actually smart in this movie. Mm. I, I actually don't think she makes a bad move in this. She movie has at all. gumption. Um, she does have gumption. She has a mean right hook. You know, you felt that. Yeah, yeah. there were a couple of them that was like, I was, I was like, like, I kind of felt that. I was like, I think Wesley actually took that. Hit. Yeah, <laughs> man. Uh, okay, um, that full of work. Kind of have to give it to Patterson here. Mm-hmm. Patterson has the worst lines. He is a cartoon villain, and possibly uh, played by the most uh, one of the most despicable human beings on earth. Okay, uh, cut that up. I'm going to agree with Lund here. Uh, the losing of the money and the subsequent whooping of, and and actually and that whole montage after the montage was awkward. Like I'm like I'm like I'm watching Woody Harrelson get his ass whooped. And Wesley but then, getting down. But then, how am I supposed to feel about Wesley Snipes like getting it down with J Lo? Like, I really like the part like, where Wesley had sex. Like, <laughs> I only like that part of the song. Personally, like, like if there's a way for me to combine the song and skip the parts of that particular song where Woody Harrelson's getting his ass whooped, and just watch Wesley Snipes get it, uh, get his freak on, you know, I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah you got you got to blend the two together. <laughs> getting it in. Uh, iconic scene. Iconic scene. Um. This is tough because, in a way, this movie doesn't really have an iconic scene. Um, but I would say the scene with the kids. And mm. and ironically, I was going to put that as I cut that out. But because you get the banter of both Woody and Wesley kind of going at it with each other and just kind of seeing in how, at the end of the day, the kids are just like, okay, this is weird. Instead of, you know pulling the trigger right <laughs> and actually rob- robbing them right and then right. actually robbing them mm-hmm. you know just to show that sometimes watching something so ridiculous just to walk away that's pretty iconic right, 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 right. uh my guy jay lonzo who's getting you that guy award uh, i was thinking about it for the longest time i i was just about ba- I, I was balancing between so many people but i'm gonna go ahead and go with the torch uh the <laughs> torch is just such a it's a villain you have no clue about him. He just, he just so, you know, he's in, mysterious. He's enthralling on the screen. Like you just want to see him just do evil shit. And the thing is, and that's, this is, I was going to my, uh, my, my iconic scene as well. Um, the torch is literally a villain that just wants to watch shit burn for no other reason. I just want to watch shit burn. You don't know if it's a mental issue, ex military. He has a he used to be a subway worker. They fired him. So he's so fuck the subway. Like, oh, yeah, that could be something. That girl that I I twerked the first time. She took my job. So fuck that bitch. She got to die too. Like right. you know, you don't know why he's motivated to do what he does, but he's so good at what he does. Like think about it this way, right? In a way, he's like a visual performer, right? When he shows up, that's the one hour a day he's working. Like right. they, so, what is he doing for the other twenty three hours about, of the day? Think about he's how long he's it took him. Groceries. Think like, about he's, like, he, he's your he's your he's your neighborhood friendly Walmart cashier. Nah, that's man. here. That here. That's just here. When he's like, not oh, at the subway, find, he's at the house. Did you find everything okay? He's you at know? the house filling them gas bags yeah. full of gas. That's, right. that's, all, that's all he's doing. Uh, yeah. Ironically, he's not a gasoline attendant. No, he he. <laughs> He really works with yeah, ice. You it's would think. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that check ward. Dry, dry ice is my specialty, actually. 
Oh. Uh, that chick award. That chick award's gonna go to J Lo, man. Grace Santiago easily because she's great on the eyes. She has a mean swing. I tell you that much. Um, and um, for this to be kind of like the first uh movie that kind of brought out J Lo in, yeah. in a way. Yo, damn good job. Yeah, absolutely. most definitely. Because after this comes Selena, so she had a good little run for sure. That fool. Patterson. Uh, Patterson. And it's funny, I was gonna give it to the train conductor of the of the uh, passenger train. Yeah, but nah, he, he didn't know what was coming, so whatever. Yeah, but <laughs> he's not gonna expect another train on his track. Like, yo, there's a fucking train behind yeah. us, dude. Yeah, like, you would think it's ramming me. The can, the the director tells you to do something. I'm like, well, it's not like he would kill me. Would he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he would. Uh, but uh, but yeah, Patterson is definitely that. As soon as you see him, he's the villain. You know what I'm saying? And then, of course, like Dave said, play by a <laughs> disgusting human being. But at the same time, like, when you, you compare his performance as Patterson to his performance in Lost Highway, David, I'm oh, sorry, Robert Blake was pretty much born to be a fucking villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, the, his demeanor in this movie is so weird. Yeah, like, you, you, you couldn't like, picture him playing, like, the soccer dad and no weird shit like that. Or, you know, like, bro? it's like, this guy has, like, the demeanor of, like, an evil sorcerer in, like, a Conan movie. Like, you would like think, with the way he acts. Like, like he's would, like, sacrifice the, <laughs> sacrifice the people like, for my train. <laughs> like, you swear up and down, like, yo, I, you're, you're, you're from hell. You're, you were born in hell. You're yeah. Satan's child. No, no doubt about it, for sure. Or you're Satan himself. Like, two. how does the flowers don't get, turn and die when you walk yeah, past like, them? Like, like, as soon as you walk past them, all of a sudden it just gets dark outside, like, the fuck? All right. But yeah, that's my that's my. Uh, that's are the word. two snakes facing each other? Sorry, <laughs> you said Conan. <laughs> um, I'm telling you, man. Uh, that guy, that so, guy's Caligula crazy. <laughs> he is Caligula crazy. Uh, cut that out. Cut that out. Uh, man, what would I cut out? Uh, I, I love this movie. This movie's dope. Um, I would actually cut out as much as I do like the montage. I would actually cut the montage too, only because. I remember being a kid watching a movie with my parents. And mind you, that's awkward. We kind of, listen, th- this is what happens. When JLo shows up Daddy, to, what's going on? Not even that. When JLo shows up to John's crib and she goes, round two. Like, oh, they're oh, about to fuck. Yeah, they're gonna fuck. <laughs> right? There's no. And so, of course, that's like, all that needed to happen. That line would have hit it perfectly. <laughs> like, you won't be watching a movie like this and like, really, round two, he's like, did you want to like eat some mac and cheese first? Right. Some like, ice cream? Like, right? Yeah, like, uh. No, no, she goes, she goes. I just made some spinach. I remember being a kid and she goes, round two and then, the next time the you see them drops, on the screen. They're and so fucking. I remember like, as Charlie is walking to Mr. Brown's place and I'm a kid watching this movie with, with my parents and they're beating him up there and then immediately the very next shot is, is John and Grace going at it. They're not even like making out. They're not, they're they are full fucking. blown fucking yeah, at this point, right? Yeah. And my, my mom goes, close your eyes. But I can still hear it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And all I want to do is to see a nipple or something, you know what I'm saying? Like as a kid, like J Lo's nipple, that's God to me. I'm seeing that. I'm watching that. <laughs> I've paused it now at this point. I've seen it so many times. Yeah. But uh it's such an awkward transition between the two. It's like passionate lovemaking, passionate ass beating. You know what I'm saying? You don't it's, really know. It's very yin and yang. It's very uh-huh. yin and yang. <laughs> passionate lovemaking and Passionate, passionate ass beat. Because trust me, they took their time with Charlie's ass. Oh, man. I'm going to enjoy this so much. Yeah. Hey, listen, Charlie, come here. They start cracking knuckles. <laughs> uh, Yeah, so yeah. It I, that, feels that's so good. <laughs> like, man, I've been waiting to kick and, your ass all week. <laughs> Let's and, do it. And uh, iconic scene. Iconic scene. Um, hmm. I would say, and it's crazy because my iconic scene is not really a big huge scene but i love the fact that they try to fuck with patterson every chance they get right for example when charlie first steals that little toy train he has cut back to when they're now being interrogated by pet by patterson again as they're leaving the office you hey you know what, what happened to that train you had and it was just like playing along with it like oh dude i saw it i saw it's all gone i was heartbroken pieces of shit are you serious because they do what they can to really fuck with this guy you know right. what i'm saying so oh yeah like, even when he calls the train and like he starts talking like his voice like no don't pick it up don't pick it up don't pick it up and like what he, he like picks it up and he's like hello honey like he's he's just like teasing him yeah yeah so so it's, it's even though it's not like a major 
seen, but it's just clever. It's clever. It was clever. It was clever. Clever, cleverly done. All right, let's get into some quick hits. Some quick, quick hits. hits here. Uh, got a few, actually. Um, two days after the film opened, two men poured petrol over a ticket booth on the Brooklyn subway and set it uh, uh, on fire in an incident similar to the one depicted in the film. Oh, my God. The booth attendant was burned and later died of his injuries. Consequently, New York City subway workers called for a boycott of the film and the removal of all the posters from every station. Senator Bob Dole quickly came out in support of them. Uh, Columbia Pictures refused to bow to their demands. So somebody was really intrigued by, by uh, 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 Torch and Torch some shit. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. The subway car used as the money train in the film is a modified R21 subway car. The car was modified by the Metropolitan Transit Authority, or the MTA, and a film crew in a way that looks nothing, absolutely nothing like the actual revenue collections train used in the system. Of course not. Have you seen? That train looked like it was a monstrosity. Uh, after production, the car was donated to the NYC Transit Museum. It is currently is stored at Coney Island Yard in Brooklyn as part of the museum car fleet and was briefly on display at the New York City Transit uh, Museum. The sex scene between Wesley Snipes and Jennifer Lopez was not in the original script, but was added after filming had begun. <laughs> Who added that? <laughs> Who knows? Robert Blake claims that his first meeting with producer John Peters consisted of Peters wrestling Blake to the ground. At the premiere, Blake said Peters told him that he told him he wrestled with Blake to see if Blake would lose his temper. While there are scenes that show R30 cl uh, class subway cars running on the IRT Lexington Avenue line, this would be physically impossible in reality. Due to NYC subways having been constructed by competing companies, trains for the lettered lines would not fit on the numbered lines, as they are too wide. IRT trains are narrower and shorter than BMT slash IND trains. And finally, uh, originally the movie was developed by director Tony Scott, rest in peace, and screenwriter Doug Richardson. After some time, Scott left the project and was replaced by Joseph Rubin, who fired Richardson and had the script rewritten. Wow. There you go. That's money train. That's money train, guys. And the facts are there. Uh, Lun, once again, man, thank you so much for rocking with us, man. Uh, for holding it down while I was gone. Today was a fun episode. Can't wait to have you, can't wait to have you back on for another one. Let the people know where they can find you. All right, uh, you can find me at Leland Hairston. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, pretty much all the things. Facebook. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> Danger enough. Talk to him. You can always find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at David Danger Neff. I'm the co-host here at Back to the Classics. Uh, we got a couple of things that are coming up in line. Um, I'm really glad to have Jay back. I'm really going to miss Lund at the same time. So this is a, a bit of a, a a bit of a heavy heart for me because in some ways, yes, the show is going back to its original format. Um, but at the same time, I'm losing like one of my best friends. Uh, he's until, dead. Uh, no, but I, <laughs> but but he's not. I mean. You know, he's not going to be on the next couple of shows. You know, we don't I'm, know. I'm going to miss Lun back. I'm, I'm going to miss Lun too. We're going to figure something out. Yeah, again. And I'm working you have on a, that. You have a voice of the people. You do. Yes. Um. Yeah. That's hey, the Green Ranger from. became the White Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to bleach you? Is that what we're... <laughs> is, that, is that the plan here? Moving on. He is no longer <laughs> Leland. He is now Larry. <laughs> A.K.A. Tommy Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> um, my guy Jay Alonzo where can they find you uh, at the house getting some food because I'm hungry uh, on all the social media simply at I am Jay Alonzo you talk to me and I'll talk back that's Facebook Instagram Snapchat and Twitter of course the Bats of Classics uh, movie talk page is up and popping on Facebook go ahead jump on there and uh, talk to us we have, we have a lot of fun on, on that uh, on that uh that movie talk uh, page there as well as spoiling the classics, which is ran by danger enough over there. Uh, don't forget to follow us on, on Instagram and on Twitter at BTTC podcast. Did I say BTTTC or two T's? I thought you said two T's. Okay. Okay. B two C's at BTTC podcast. Follow us, you know, jump on in there and then, uh, we'll, we'll love talking to you guys. Uh, shout out to our sponsors today. Audible trial.com slash beat. Yeah. Or audible.com. Yeah. Or, or audible.com. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs> but yes, you can find, uh, you can download your free uh, audiobook, audibletrial.com backslash B E A T. B E A T. But well Be done. You. Thank well, you. Well done on, on, on including that. Thank you. End. Yeah. You, I figured, you know, they pay bills. Right. Professional. Professional. 
Uh, with that being said, we will be back with you guys next week. Uh, enjoy the, uh, the, the, the great weekend. Go see Joker. Yeah, I'm going to go see that. Yeah, go see Joker. It's, it's out. It's coming out. And I'm, I think we're, we're going to do like a beat crew trip to go see it. I'm going to be mad because it's going to be good, but also there won't be any Batman, so. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, maybe that's until, until, until uh, Bobby Pats come through there in, in his bat in his bat outfit. With that being said, I am Jay Alonzo. With me, of course, is Danger Enough. This is Bats of Classics. We'll see y'all next week. Peace, peace, peace.